Well, everyone, it is that time once again for us to check back in on a game which many of us found underwhelming, and that is, of course, the one and only Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Now, I've done a bunch of coverage of this game. I've done a review. I played the whole thing on stream. I'm sure you've seen that content. So we're not gonna rehash all of that nitty gritty here today. Rather, I wanna check out the update that they dropped a handful of days ago that allegedly fixes a lot of the networking issues, a lot of the matchmaking issues and stuff that made the game unplayable for many players for months. And furthermore, there are leaks suggesting there are entire Entirely new game modes coming to the game, even though they haven't been announced yet at this point in the game's life cycle, which is kind of shocking. And of course, the elephant in the room, which is the big season one update introducing a new playable character in the form of the Joker Baby. I'm the Joker Baby. <laughs> and this season one update is actually scheduled and slated for release tomorrow morning. So I'm going to be playing it over on stream. Come by to Luke Stevens Live. Links below if you want to check that out and see me try the new playable character because there's some interesting stuff with it that could potentially make this game more interesting but also it seems that they've actually walked back on one of their initial guarantees which was that you weren't going to be able to pay for these playable characters at all they were going to be completely free and available to everyone at the same time they've actually walked that back and you are as it turns out able to pay for the joker to get access to him before everybody else does and just skip the story content that introduces him which is a little weird but again we'll talk about all of that in just a second and of course thank you to the sponsor of this video factor 75. factor 75 is the meal delivery service with chef prepared dietitian approved meals that are as delicious as they are easy to put together and it's super easy to get going you simply select from 35 plus fresh never frozen meals and you select from the list of 55 plus add-ons every single week and then factor 75 preps cooks cooks and delivers the meals straight to your door. And all you have to do is take them out of the fridge, pop them in the microwave for two minutes and you are good to go. And one of my favorite things about Factor 75 is that they have such a broad selection of meals that you can pick which ones fit with your current diet, pretty much regardless of what you're going for. If you're on keto, they've got keto meals. If you're looking for something heavy in protein, they've got that too. If you're vegan, they have options for that. It's crazy. And like I said, the meals are as delicious as they are easy to put together. Check them out today at the link in the video description box below or in the pinned comment and make sure to use my promo code to get 50% off of your first box and in addition they're going to toss in two free wellness shots with every box that you order so long as your subscription is active basically free wellness shots for life if you've hung out with me on stream you've seen me eat factor meals because they are very easy when you're streaming and you just need a quick meal that's also nutritious i love these things they basically got me through my first son's like early months because we were just too exhausted to actually like cook food on a daily basis and factor was so easy and also so good that we could have high quality meals that tasted delicious and were good for us while also juggling a newborn which was very very useful. <laughs> so again, check them out at the links below and make sure to use my promo code to get 50% off of your first order and to get those free wellness shots. Okay, so I'm actually in the game now and matchmaking is working. I am just as baffled as you are. <laughs> in case you didn't know, matchmaking for most players was just sort of broken, especially after you completed the main story. It just would glitch out and not work properly. And it was super annoying because in later, like higher tier missions and higher level missions, especially in the end game, you really need to have high level teammates to play with. Otherwise things just don't work properly. It's super, super annoying. But now it actually is working. This isn't that isn't working, but this is actually working, which is awesome to see. And it does feel and play much better. I've actually done a few rounds with this squad because I may or may not have forgotten to hit the record button once I swapped over to the Xbox. I'm a professional, don't worry about it. And again, I'll give them credit. It does actually play much better when it's working the way it's supposed to, when you're actually able to match make and play with others it's great it's almost like this is how it was supposed to be from the beginning <laughs> isn't that weird and smash love it okay so i'm happy to report when the game's actually working the way it's supposed to it's a good time and it's significantly better than i feel the base game is playing solo and it's just unfortunate that it's taken two months to get to the point where people can actually play the game 
in the way it was supposed to be day one, which is, you know, due to a, a myriad of factors. It's not just because players didn't give it a chance. It's like, no, it, it literally didn't work. So even if you wanted to play it with friends, you just couldn't, which is uh, no one's fault but the developers, honestly. And now more guys warp in and we fight waves and waves. Now, some interesting things are being added to the game, allegedly, according to, to some uh, data miners, which for one is that they are allegedly working on a PVPVE mode, which is effectively just a, a, a version of the game where you're going to be able to also fight Elseworld variants of Task Force X, which is interesting. And I mean, if that ends up actually being true, you know, data miners are saying that they have good reason to believe it's true. But if that is actually true, that could fix one of the biggest problems with this game, which is enemy variety. You basically fight waves and waves of purple zitted enemies over and over and over again. It's basically all you do. And if they were able to swap it out so you then can start fighting Elseworld versions of Harley or of, of Captain Boomerang or something, that could be really, really interesting and make the game feel much bigger than it currently is. However, of course, right now it's all up in the air. We don't know for a fact if that is in fact going to happen. It's been data mined. People are pretty confident about it that have dug into the game's files. So it might be the case. It might not. It's just a matter of time. Here are some more rewards. You can see they've also changed out the drop rates of certain like legendary items and high tier items because they want players to feel that little drip drip of dopamine every time that they get some new shiny gun which is great because it's a looter shooter you kind of have to have that stuff otherwise the game just doesn't work in concept so I can appreciate that and they really have cranked up the drop rates I mean even when you're just exploring the city you're going to be finding all sorts of new stuff as you run around which helps it certainly helps and i mean again it's i can see why they wanted to push cosmetics so much cosmetics emotes and stuff like that there's some weird sliding going on but the game is certainly more fun with human beings as opposed to just a bunch of like uh bots and ai controlled groups which is great i mean with all this you still have to ask like does this save the game is this enough to now have it so you can play with your friends and that works and then also add in some new Elseworld missions with the season one update and Joker as a playable character. Like, is that enough to save the game? And my stance is that while this is better, I still don't think it's enough to make the game great or make the game worth $70 compared to other games you can get for $70. I do think it could eventually get to the point where it's worth like 20 to 30 bucks. I don't think it's quite there right now, especially because there are still some pretty significant technical issues people are reporting. But I do think it could eventually get to the point where it's worth, you know, a deep sale or perhaps like Game Pass or even a free to play model, of course, would make this more viable. Just because right now for 10 hours of content, season one might add a few more hours. I just don't think that's worth 70 bucks for what we're getting and how repetitive it is. But in six months or a year, once they've added a bunch more stuff, it could get to that point where it's worth the, the 30 bucks or whatever else it might be on sale for around that time. But speaking of season one, you can see that there's been some reporting by the one and only Paul Tassi over at Forbes, where he looked at this sheet that was the message of the day for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. And the interesting thing about this is that they describe all of the perks of season one. And as you can see, it says right here, the Joker can be unlocked as part of the story for season one by defeating Brainiac. Or if you just can't wait, you can get instant access to him in the store. Now, this is weird because I was under the impression, and so was everybody else, that they were just making all of these characters available free to play. That's it. There's no like pay to play access where, oh, you were able to get this character because you had an extra 20 bucks laying around. There's nothing like that. It's all free and available to people for free. And while that is technically still true, you can get the character for free if you play through the story content of season one, they are now also allowing you to buy him immediately, which I don't know if that means you can then play through his missions as him before the group has met him. I don't know if that is how that works. I don't know if it's just how they get around, uh, like allowing you to buy a skin for a character you don't have in your squad yet or something. I, I don't really know what this is or, or why this is set up this way, but apparently you can just buy him ahead of completing the story, which is 
news to pretty much everybody. Now, just to play devil's advocate, I don't expect this to be that big of a deal because I've seen some data mined and leaked outlines for the season one story. And it seems like you're going to get access to Joker in like chapter one or chapter two of the story. It seems like probably within half an hour to an hour of booting up season one, you're going to have access to him. So I don't expect it to make sense to buy it. You know, it's not like they're locking him behind 50 hours of grind or something. Maybe they do end up doing that. Maybe that is in fact what it is. And these leaks of like a shorter storyline are not to be believed, but that would be interesting. I mean, if they blowed out season one and then sell you the character ahead of time, that would suck. I think, but I'm not expecting that. I'm expecting like an hour of content and then you get access to him and it's it's not a big deal. But I guess we're going to find out tomorrow. You better believe I'm going to test it. I'm going to play it. I'm going to find out. So come over to Luke Stevens Live and uh, you can see me playing it and uh, slowly drifting into a deeper and deeper chasm of my own making. Furthermore, we've seen the outlines for season one. There's a couple of extra episodes, new Riddler content. There's new like missions. There's probably a couple of new uh, Elseworld missions, a few of them at least. And so that should help shake up endgame content a little bit. There's the rumored added mode for a PvPVE mode. And then there's also boss fight variants, which are just Brainiac fights, but they're reskins of the Green Lantern fight or Superman fight that's going to come in uh, like the second part of or like second episode I think is what they're calling it of season one so it's just further reskins of the same fights and listen contrary to popular belief I would love for this to be like the beginning of an amazing comeback I don't like seeing Rocksteady put out a game that we're all frustrated by and find woefully underwhelming and while they are taking steps to improve it such as making sure that matchmaking works and you can play with other people that's great but it should have been there day one like <laughs> It shouldn't be like, congratulations, two months after launch, it's working now the way it was supposed to on day one. It's just a little frustrating that, or no, it's, it's a lot frustrating that after all this time, we're just now getting to the point where the game is functioning properly and then they're bringing season one. Like, why didn't you just delay it another two months and then get here, like launch in this state and then bring season one? And furthermore, it's baffling because the core complaint for most people with Suicide Squad at launch was that there was just a lack of variety of content. There was a lack of content in general. The game was only about 10 hours long and that was made up of like two and a half to three hours of actually like unique encounters and missions and, and boss fights and stuff. And so if that's the biggest complaint, you would think that season one would be coming like a week after launch to add in a bunch of new stuff so that there's more content to sift through. But instead they waited two months and even then, it seems like the amount of content that's going to be offered is going to be fairly minimal. So it just makes you wonder how any of this was greenlit, how anybody thought that this was going to be a viable way of launching a live service game. And I think that's unfortunately going to be the legacy of this game, unless they can really turn stuff around with season one and season two. And that's just going to be that it's a baffling game that doesn't make any sense at all. And everybody's just confused at how it was greenlit to begin with. So recap, I'm happy to report the game runs way better, which is awesome. Matchmaking actually seems to be working, which is something I couldn't get to happen for the last like two months. So that's also great. The game is much better with real human beings. So I'm glad that that's there two months too late probably, but still I'm glad that it's there and they deserve some credit for actually fixing that. So that's Cool. Beyond that, season one launches tomorrow and we are all waiting with bated breath to see if it adds enough content to make this game more compelling in the long term. And while they initially said that the Joker was just going to be available for free for everybody, full stop, they now are offering him for sale immediately if you don't want to play the story content and you just want to get access to him immediately. I can't imagine many players do that because if you're still playing this game, you probably want to see the story. But nonetheless, that is an interesting development. And beyond all of that, data miners are finding evidence of an actual PvPVE mode comparable to Destiny 2's Gambit mode in the game files where possibly you work with other like multiversal versions of the task force x members which is an interesting concept and i think that could actually do a lot for the game if that is in fact in the works because that could fix or at least help with one of the biggest problems of the game which is lack of enemy variety and encounter variety so hopefully that's a thing i don't know why they wouldn't have announced it yet if it is in fact a thing but 
I guess time will will tell. There are also rumors that they are rearranging some of the post-launch content to try and expedite playable characters being introduced to try and get people just really excited so they aren't taking four seasons over a year, but maybe taking four seasons within six months to get people more excited and have more content come for the game. I think they need to do something like that. Otherwise, I think players are just going to continue checking out because again, this is just not sustainable for a live service game. If you want this game to be successful long term, if you want them to keep pumping out seasons every year for three years for this game, you got to have a lot more players than 500 playing it at any given time and i think the real bellwether for whether this game gets canned before its first year is over is going to be whether this number spikes significantly when season one drops tomorrow if it does there's a chance but if it doesn't i just don't see how they can salvage it i mean at some point for warner brothers it just doesn't make sense to keep this thing on life support if it's just hemorrhaging money so I'll be waiting. I'll be watching. You better believe that I'm going to be covering it. And if you want to see more videos covering season one and see like a season one review that I'm going to do, make sure to subscribe. Okay, guys. So since I finished wrapping up this video, uh, I actually started streaming and then Rocksteady actually did this like little showcase thing to showcase the uh, season one content and some more gameplay footage of it, which you're seeing right now. And kind of just give the pitch for it, showing, you know, all of the different things that Joker can do, some new weapons, some new skins, what's going to be in the shop and things like that. And so I have a better idea of what season one is actually going to bring to the table now. And it's pretty much exactly what I was feeling in the video and speculating about. It seems like most of the content is going to be tied up in this new Elseworld that you're seeing on screen now, which is just an end game arena basically that's lightly themed to the joker and then there's going to be some green infused enemies that have sort of a reskin applied to them to make them more joker themed in these else worlds but other than that there's not much there's going to be some alterations to the core game map the battle pass is going to be revamped and everything but all told it's going to be the same game it's just with a Joker coat of paint on some areas of it. I don't think that that moves the needle very much. I mean, as you can see, it's literally just big boxes that look like presents that you're swinging around on. And like, I just don't foresee that being enough to probably save the game. But like I said, we're gonna play it tomorrow when it launches and I uh, hope to see you there. So even if you're seeing this on launch day, if you're seeing this on March 28th or afterwards, um, I encourage you to go to the link in the description box below and you can see the full stream of me playing this so you can see for yourself whether it holds up or not. I'm going to give it a shot. I like to put my money where my mouth is. In this case, it's nice because this is a free update. I'll give them credit for that. But I, I want to see what this actually has to offer instead of just taking like Twitter's word for it uh, and seeing that it's bad. I'd rather play it for myself. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to check it out. And I hope to see you over there on the stream and be able to talk about it. I also want to give uh, Warner Brothers some credit for trying to be more transparent with it. These types of showcases, I think, are better than just dropping random trailers on Twitter or X, I guess. So I think this is a better way to do it. I still think it probably should have been dropped a week ago, you know, not just the day before it drops, but they probably have their reasons for it. I appreciate the transparency, but again, I mean, as you can see, this is the Brainiac. This is this is a clip of it. This is the reskin of the, the Green Lantern fight against Brainiac. You see right here? It's just the Green Lantern fight reworked to look like Brainiac. It's, it's just crazy to me. I'll give them credit for trying to be more transparent with it, show some of the content. I don't know how much content is going to be provided, but we're going to find out. Much love. I'll see you in the next one, hopefully tomorrow morning for the launch of season one. And we'll see if it uh, if it holds up. And of course, if you want to see my like kind of follow up video and review on season one and all of that stuff, make sure to subscribe. Much love. See you in the next one. Hugs and kisses. Bye bye.